Okay, shalom. Wonderful lesson ahead. Hopefully quite a quick lesson, but some incredible concepts. The whole concept of this Ain Sof and how that's related to um, the red, red pottage of Asaph. Now, this is a big mystery that we need to start to grasp in full. Okay, so shalom. Right, so we've got this concept of Ain Sof, which I always challenge because it seems to me that is definitely not Torah. And I will show you in this lesson how it's actually related to the red, red potage that was fed to Esav, okay, from Yaakov. We've got this big, powerful inner secret teaching of the Torah, which talks about this whole concept of a totally unknowable, um, infinitely unknowable God, and that's called Ein Sof. It's actually rooted in Neoplatonism, and that's an absolute fact. There is no distinction between the concept of Ein Sof and the concept of of um, this same theory, this same philosophy within Greek philosophy. Okay, I, I will go on now just to show how um, connected to false concepts it actually is. But you know, we've got to wrestle with these ideas because you know where we actually perceive Yote Wa with the greatest. It's when we're at the Yam Suf, the Red Sea. What you've got to understand is that like the sea is just vast and infinite, but it's not until that the dry land is exposed from within that sea that represents the name of Yote Wawi that can we get from exile to redemption. So we've got to start to see these concepts for what they are. They've led us astray during exile. They are part of the false gods that we have got to wrestle in order to attain the state of Israel, the status of Israel that is worthy of redemption and that is the people that then unites with the name of Yote Wauhe. Okay, so there's lots of concepts that are gonna lead us astray during exile. There's lots of false concepts of God that we have to wrestle with. We've got to wrestle with this concept of Ainsoff. It is not the truth. It is no way in Torah. I did um an analysis of, of the actual word Ainsoff. Nowhere in Torah. There's no anagram of it. There is no um, initial letters, there's no sophite letters in sequence, there's there's no verses, that there's no evidence or trace of the concept of Ainsoff whatsoever. All there is is numbers, okay? It's only got numbers, and this is a significant number that it relates to, this potage, to just let us know that this has been fed to us during Edomite exile, Okay? When we're in a state of maturity, which is equivalent to death. Why is it equivalent to death? Because we are not attached to life, the tree of life, the name of Yote Wauhe. This is what we get fed when we're immature, like Esav, when we're unrectified. So, Min Ha'adam, Ha'adam Hazeh, 207. Exactly the same gematria as Ensof. It, however, as um, an Arden of 90, which is equivalent to... Um, it's equivalent to Melech, king. Okay. We're going to primarily be looking at this number here because it's related to a lot of the things that I have been saying. Um, you, need to have, you need to start to wrestle these false gods down because do you know why? Because the concept of Ein Sof is part of the inner secret teachings of the Torah and instead we should have the truth about Od Yosef Chai, the way Yodeh Wawi has been gathering the lost house of Israel and that's the truth and that's what's going to get, re that's what reveals the power and authority of the name of Yodeh Wawi. A concept of an infinitely unknowable, ungraspable God does not. It does not take us to the place where we need to be. Okay, it doesn't take us to the yam sof. It leads us astray. Ain sof. There is no end. There is no end of exile. We need to be at the yam sof. So we've got this without end. And ain sof is equivalent to light. Okay, but this light is hidden. It's hidden in concepts such as ain sof. We have to wrestle with this to reveal this. This is what it is to be Israel. One who wrestles with God and prevails. One who wrestles with God and man and prevails. What God do we need to wrestle with? These false gods. This is a, this is a concept that is a Greek concept of God. It's not Hebraic. It's not Torah. It's been swallowed down to plain and sinker. And then it's infected all the other um, esoterical teachings of Christianity and Islam. 
to our detriment. So what have we got here? Okay, so this is um, this number here and this number. So this is the the filling out of min ha adam ha adam ha ze at the level of bria, where the vav is filled with an aleph and the he is filled with a yud, and the, the level of atziluth also, where the vav is filled with an aleph, uh, sorry yud, and the he is filled with a yud. So this means this means there's no vavs then if those two are the same. No, there's no vavs. So okay, so so you no truth. There's no truth in this. Vav represents the truth. Min ha adam ha adam hazeh. There is no truth. That's what it is. There's no truth in this concept ain't soft. Except when we wrestle with it to reveal the hidden light. So this has got a mispakadima of six. This is one of the gematria ciphers. Mispakadimas. 600 and that's when you add every single of each letter of this so the lamed you would have to add up all the preceding values of the letters in the alphabet that preceded the lamed like where's the aleph like where's the tav so the tav's got an incredible number i think it's like 1495 it's added every single number up prior to it so you get to big numbers with miss pakadima but they're very filled out numbers Okay, so the 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 quite important numbers, but four times one thousand five hundred and sixty-three. So you shall not establish the lamp of Israel. This is David, and it's connected to this min ha adam ha adam hazeh. We don't want to put out the lamp of Israel, which is David, because David is the unity between the upper face and the lower face of the name of Yod Hey Wow Hey. So straight away, nothing of this red red potage. David was taken off the battlefield to preserve his life, okay, so that you do not extinguish the lamp of Israel. And the lamp is lit with the name of Yote Wauhe, okay, so that's connected to that. We do not want to extinguish the end. Do you know what the end is? This is final redemption. David represents final redemption when we've finally got rectified Adam and rectified Eve coming together as one, face to face and creating shalom throughout the entire of the universe okay and this whole experience of eating the red red potage and battling with all the false gods of asaph all the fantasy fiction versions of asaph asaph represents our fantasy what we can imagine god is and what god is two separate things but you see when we imagine what god is we think, do and say according to our imagination as a, a rather than the truth. The truth shall set us free from this cycle of exile. And then finally the lamp of Israel will be lit. And guess what? We will be, we will enter into that millennium kingdom. You know, it's, t it's a little bit like the virgins, isn't it? The wise virgins that kept kept the oil lamps burning throughout the night they had enough oil for, for throughout the light keep your lamp lit <laughs> don't extinguish this lamp this lamp is important okay so king of the nations square audible miss pagadol 1563 see when we're done battling with asaph he will submit to israel he wants to god's plan is to make he be the king over israel melech israel melech goyim i've talked about this endlessly why do i talk about it endlessly because the torah reveals it endlessly the beginning and the end of the torah reveal this the purpose is not to be just king over our soul king over heaven he wants to be king over earth also he wants to be king down here below in this below lower reality but first we've got to wrestle the god that's there instead the god of our imagination the god of our lower nature the god of our ego the god of our bodies in order for the to be the God of our soul take predominance in this reality. So we've got to wrestle all the gods of our imagination, which are represented by the gods of Asab, Satan himself, and the gods of our, our, all, the, all of the nations. It's all one concept. Um, here we can... Oh, this one will come later. So yeah, Yodhe Wawi has got a plan with this wrestling to subdue it to a place of shalom. Okay, then the light of Yote, where we can fill the vessel that is the nations. 
the lamp of his the light of Israel can fill the nations with shalom, the vessel. So she named him Shimeon. Sorry, she named him Shimon. This has been very relevant just in these latest teachings that I've done. But Shimon is the one who came to reveal the upper face of Yote while with that knees reuniting with the, the with the lower face that's revealed in the Torah of Moshe. Both revelations are revealed in the Torah of Moshe, but predominantly the Torah of Moshe is a revelation of the lower face of Yote Wawe. The upper face is what was revealed um, and has been exiled into Rome. Okay, so this was revealed through the concept of Moshiach ben Yosef or through the Yeshua, that's a title for one who reveals the upper face, the all seen eye of complete total mercy is above the letter of the Torah. It needs uniting and marrying with your king with the Torah of Moshe. So here, two times filled at the level of um, Yetzira, and that means there's no haze. Yeah, <laughs> the level of Yetzira and um, Bria is the same. Okay, so here, the king of the nations is accomplished through this man here. So she named him Shimon. She named him Shimon because she was hated. She was hated because she should have married Asaph. She was destined. She was the Bikara. She was destined to marry the Bikara, who was Asaph. But Asaph's Bikara got sold to Yaakov, so she ended up marrying Yaakov, but Yaakov hated her. So there needs to be a rectification, you see. There needs to be a rectification of Asaph, and there needs to be a rectification of all this hate. We need Yote Wawi's love. The infinite essence, his infinite essence, his love, is motivated by love. Got to transform that hate. Got to transform that hate that conceals that love into love itself. Okay. And this Shimon is being ordained for that purpose. To go in and rest, help, give us the Shimon that represents the upper face all merciful levels of love forgiveness kindness grace compassion with no judgment whatsoever within the letter of the torah there's judgment and death but at this level there's nothing but love that's why when your soul is touched with the revelation of that upper face through the whole concept that we find within christianity that is your day while we has used christianity to reveal this light you feel love you feel loved. All you can say, Jesus loves me. God loves me. You're illuminated with this love. This love, however, because it's exiled within Roman Catholicism, it gets extinguished. You shall not extinguish that lamp. But you see, we're in this battle. We don't get taken off the battlefield. We're in the fiercest part of the battle. And sometimes the, that love gets extinguished. And then it gets transformed into something other than love. Hate. But we've got to continually reconnect to those powerful spiritual revelations and illuminations that we received. Keep alivening that. Keep remembering Yosef is forgot. We, exile causes us to forget. It causes us to forget that God is love. His infinite essence is one of love. And then that we forget and we forget and we become, we, we become cold. We start hating. As if we have never received a revelation. We've got to keep that lamp burning. We've got to keep that lamp burning until he comes. Um, we've got to be, be like virgins. You know, as if as if nothing else has, has touched us and violated us. You know, set that light. We've got to remain faithful to that light that we've received. That illumination that we've received. Shimon Bar Yona. So, Shimon Bar Yona. He's connected up here, isn't it, to this red, red pottage. He is here to rectify this whole situation where the Bekorah was taken from Asaph because Asaph was too immature to receive it. And we've had to go the long way around to bring Yaakov to a place um, where he can finally subdue this evil, fight against all Asaph's immature version of God with the truth, or Joseph Chai, the truth, there's only Yod here, why we nothing else beside him. Shimon Bar Yona, who is Shimon Ben Hillel, who is Shemai, who is um, Shimon Kefa, 
has been part of that process. The whole descent of Yod Huawei's Moshiach into Rome has been part of that process of rectifying Asav and all the problems, uh, all the immaturity of Asav, which we all share in that immaturity. We've all got a portion of Asav's darkness. We've all got a par portion of, of what Asav represents because we've all got bodies. So we all need to rectify. We've all got work to do to transform the darkness of our e own egos and self-centeredness and hate into love and altruism and giving <laughs> or receiving for the sake of giving. So that's all connected to that Yodeh where we had a pro purpose. 866 is Tishma Un, listen to him, the prophet that would come like Moshe. I go cro over that number many times. 127 is a filling out of the ordinal of Yeshua at the level of Atsilut. The first filling out of Yeshua at the level of Atsilut. 138 Tzemech, Menachem. Okay? Both are 138. We've got to get to a state where we're permanently growing, permanently flourishing like evergreen leaves on a tree. Okay? We've got to get to that status where we, there's no death anymore, but only growth, only, only ascent. It's all wonderful. Okay, so this next one. And upon the new stone, uh, and upon the stone, a new name written. Okay, so what's the name that's going to be written? It's looking a lot like it could be Shimon. <laughs> Listen to him. Listen, why? Because he's got a job to do to transform the hate of Asaph, the problem of the hate of Asaph, into love. This is a big job. But you know the power of the name of Yod Wawi has revealed that the level of Ket has got the power to do that. We need to meditate and attach and we need to have this flame alivened within us. We have forgotten who we are and what we're here to do. You know, we're so busy living out our Ed Edomite lives in Edomite exile that we've actually forgotten our true mission. What are we here to do? We're not on holiday. And upon the stone a new name written. So this is the regular and ordinal come to... 1527 exactly this exactly this okay he that up here let him yishma here look shimo shimon you know because god had heard that she was hated okay she was hated because you know she was meant to marry herself because she could have ought but Leah had the power to, to convert herself instantly from Russia into Tzadik. She was the one that was that had his as had, had the ability to do that. She was at his level. But it, we didn't go we didn't choose the easy path. We chose the hard path, but we get back to the easy path. All the hard paths lead to the easy path <laughs> eventually. Okay, so one five two seven. Um Hear what the Spirit saith to the churches or to the Knesset or Kehilot. I don't like using these Christian terms. This is taken from the New Testament, but it's in Hebrew. To him that overcometh, to him will I give of the hidden manna. That is the name of your Tehwawi. And I will give him a white stone and upon the stone a new name written, which no one knoweth but he that receiveth it. Okay, so I can't say for definite it is Shimon because I'm just somebody that looks into the Torah and sees connections through the numbers as what we were supposed to do to reveal the concept of the Mashiach. It just so happens that... So I'm not saying that I'm somebody with a, with a white stone with a new name written on it. I'm just saying it's looking a whole lot like that new name will be Shimon. <laughs> it just, you know, it, it's looking like that. The fact it's called Shimon Kepha, it's pointing towards that. I'm not saying I'm a prophet in any way. I'm just saying that I've looked and I see something that's giving me the indication that it is going to be Shimon. Tishma, unlisten to him. Kefit sat shortening of the way. So we have a choice. Easy path, easy quick path, <laughs> long path, long hard path. We've chosen the long hard path, but however there is shortenings of the way. You know, if you imitate the name of your day while well, we were short in the way, we need a very short way now. Look at Baal Shem Tov. He brought this whole idea of the Kefit Sat Haderech in because he literally used to set off on journeys and miraculously arrive at the destination. You know, he never had to break Shabbat and things like that. Although it was in the natural world, he would have broken Shabbat. 
you know, many times over, but he had this power to literally, in the physical shot and the way we have got that power now, it's because he imitated the name of Yote Wawi. He was kind. Chesed. That's how you shorten the way. Be kind, be forgiving, be loving. He really was the epitome of one who came in the name of Yote Wawe. Okay. Unfortunately, you see that light? It came in with the Miss Bagadine, the equal opposite. The light of Mashiach ben Yosef came in with the equal opposite to, to, to close it. And then what have we got now? from the Hasidic movement. He came and he, and he revealed the chesed of Yod Wawi, and now these Hasidics are the most severe ultra-Orthodox on the side of Gevura. It goes to the opposite. And that's exactly what's happened. We receive light and it descends all the way till it becomes its opposite. We've got to fight to keep that light alive. Not all Hasidim have done that, but the vast majority, they're on the side of ultra-Orthodox, ultra-stringent. You know, it, 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 it became its opposite. But we have got a way, shortening the way. Imitate the one who guided us. Okay, imitate the good shepherds. Be like them in thought, word, and deed. And we're going to be all right. We're going to shorten the way from exile to redemption. 1527. It's all connected. And here we can see Shimon by Yona. So we know there's a concept, there's a connect between Shimon by Yona and the shortening of the way okay and also that is definitely connected to Shem, Baal Shem Tov and if you've ever listened to the teachings of Ariel Cohen Olaro there's a great significance in the teachings of Baal Shem Tov you know we've got to start imitating the good shepherds and the way that they behaved the way that they thought and the way that they spoke and don't make any excuses don't make any excuses at all. These people didn't make excuses. They simply were. Um, they simply was anointed to reveal the name of your day. Well, then. The way of the serpent on the rock. This is what we've chosen instead, isn't it? We've chosen the rock would be like um, Shimon Kepha. And we've just seen the entire forces of Asaph. <laughs> We've had to put up with the entire forces of Asaph upon that rock. That rock has descended into the belly of the serpent. So that's what we've been seeing in these 2,000 years of history. Um, it is according to Torah. yod heh -Wah has been gathering in the lost house of Yosef in a very concealed way. Okay, so the way of the serpent upon the rock. You know, if you don't reveal it the short way, you've got the long way, haven't you? Which is what we've got. You know, maybe towards the end we can speed things up a little bit. 2778 is 2 times 1389. It's all a wonderful med meditation. You see this light, this rock, descended into Asav. And now we can we can look at the way. Um, this is what I mean by hindsight. If we have eyes to see, we can see how this serpent that has control over this rock has been moving and from the concealment we can gain the revelation okay we can see the light that's hidden in that whole belly of the serpent is roman catholicism the ath knowledge square regular of knowledge is um one five two seven it's this number here one hundred and sixty four thousand hundred and sixteen so that's 108 times one thousand five hundred and twenty seven you see, it's our knowledge that fell down and it became this red, red potage. It became this red, red potage. It became the serpent on the rock. You know, um, we have got to restore our knowledge. We ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So now we've got a mixture. Um, and really we want the tree of life reality that there's only your day where we're nothing else beside him. We've got to restore our knowledge, however through battling with all the forces of Asaph, to be able to reveal ourselves as Israel, to reveal the true concept of Mashiach, to reveal the Torah of Moshe is true, and Mo Moshe is true and the Torah of Moshe is true, to restore that knowledge back up, because through that restored da'ath, we are able to perceive the name of yod heh -Wah clearly. Okay, so we've got to restore our knowledge. We ate, we, de we defected our knowledge, and now we've got to restore it, we've got to perfect it. Um, and we do that through wrestling. We, we, there's nothing defective in anything. We're not experiencing a defective reality where evil could potentially win. 
okay we are we are we are witnessing perfection but we haven't yet got eyes open to see that perfection because your day while we didn't create anything other than perfection there's no defect in him so everything, even though it appears defective, we've got to have that faith in Yote Wawe, our knowledge of Yote Wawe to tell us, hang on a minute, there can't be any defect whatsoever. There can only be perfection because of the one who we know created this. So it's not like, oh, just wait a minute, something went wrong. Because that would mean that Yote Wawe was wrong. There's something wrong or defective about Yote Wawe. There isn't. There's only utter perfection, but we're co-creators. He gave us the opportunity to reveal that hidden perfection. But how do we do that? Well, do you know what? It's covered in filth. It's covered in evil. It's covered in death. It, it, it's a, it, it's filthy. We've got to have our knowledge restored, our perfect knowledge of Yote Wawe. And it's only utterly perfect. We've got to just be so fixed on that that we're able to transform the other reality um, into a revelation of that. We've got to start interpreting reality from that through that lens when we are imperfect ourselves when we've got when our ego is aroused and aflamed this is the way i look at it it's like having blurred glasses on you're looking into the torah it's like almost a two-way mirror you're either looking out in you either either looking into the torah and seeing your tail while we through a clear lens or you're looking into the Torah and seeing all the defects that you have got within yourself, staring back at you, you know. So you, it's like a two-way mirror. You're either looking at a mirror, looking at all, maybe there's some good, maybe there's some bad. If you're on the wrong side of the screen, if you're on the tree of knowledge side, it's a mirror. And you are looking, oh, that's good about me, that's bad. And then because you've made a judgment about yourself, then you look out in the world and then you're looking at others based on that opinion of yourself from staring into the Torah. This is the Torah when it's in tree of knowledge perspective. You've got to get to tree of life's perspective and then you're looking, you're looking through the other side of the mirror out into the world and seeing what your day Wawa is doing. We've got to attain that level. We've got to, tr we've got to go back to um, the source of life. And look at it from that perspective. We've got to nullify ourselves in order to perceive your day while we're. Okay, we've got to get rid of that evil. We've got to nullify it to some degree. We've got to, we've got to see beyond what's just good and bad. You know, we've we've got to see into the utter and absolute perfection of our reality, and see that we are not here to just look at ourselves in the mirror. We are here to do a work to reveal that perfection that's hidden behind all that. The underlying perfection of your day. Wow, hey. Okay. And he learned to attack prey, he devoured men. So this comes to a Miss Pagadol of that, Miss Pagadol of 2814 plus an ordinal Miss Pagadol of 240. 24 is David rectified so 10 times david goes to 3054 2 times 1527 so connected to all this why is this important because look trof tref it says hoya wa yil mad litrof tref adam ochol ochol so there's a connection up to adam eight it's really man eight it all it says, and he learned to attack prey, he devoured men, he ate men, he ate Adam. So we can see it's related to this, because Asaph ate Adam, the red, red potter, joker. It's also connected to this lie. It says, trof, trof, Yosef, surely torn is Yosef, and ach, trof, trof. So you've got this repeated trof, trof. It's also connected to the dove that tore off the olive leaf, and the olive leaf that she tore off is Mashiach ben Dawid. It's so all connected to these major concepts of messianic concepts. One is connected to Asaph, two is connected to Yosef, and then three is connected to David, who is the torn off olive leaf in the dove, uh, mouth of the dove. And it's all connected to this, Da'ath, because Mashiach is restored Da'ath. Moshe is supernal Da'ath, the concept of Mashiach is supernal Da'ath. Instead of the Mashiach, we've got the Nachash, because we've got false understandings of what the Mashiach is. Because we've got um, 
Asaph's version of Mashiach, the Christian version of Mashiach, we don't have a true, we don't understand what the Mashiach is. The Mashiach is the one who anointed to reveal the name of Yod He Wawi, who is nothing but love. His essence is pure love. He wants unity, not separation. But he brings about an opportunity from unity. He brings, he allows us to partake in that unity through first being separated. And then we have got to, through the power of his name and restored knowledge, bring about unity. All the Abrahamic faiths at this time, through through false teachings and false doctrines, that create concepts of false Mashiach and false gods, create separation and hate, violence like what we've even seen. Zealous for the wrong things, zealous for evil. Instead of zealous for death and judgment of the others that we perceive as evil. Because the, the teachings, the falseness that we've, the false teachings that we've inherited create lies that create hate. They create Asaph that creates hate. We know that Asaph's related to hate because of what happened to Leah. She was hated. She should have married Asaph and rectified him. She was hated. So we've got to take that and transform it into love. And it's all connected. And he learned to attack prey, devoured men. So if we don't have the correct concept of Mashiach ben Yosef and we don't have the correct concept of Mashiach ben David and we don't have the correct concept of Adam, which is Adam, David and Mashiach, we don't have the correct concept of the Holy Dove to unite and bring Shalom. We're going to have this instead. He learned to attack prey and he devoured men. He ate men. Like we're going to be stuck in this mode, aren't we? Ace of eating the Adam. The red, the, it's Adam. He's eating it down, gulping it down, because he's, 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 he thinks he's going to die. Because he's not attached to the tree of life. We've got to rectify all that. Pidion Nefesh. So this is um, how Pidion Nefesh is spelt in 2130. There is a man, Ariel Loro, and he is determined to raise $2 million, and I pray for his success soon, <laughs> quick. Um, Pidion Nefesh, so he can he can do a Pidion Nefesh on the soul of Mashiach ben Yosef. Okay. That will happen. I'm pretty sure that will happen. Because why? Because of all this. It's all connected to this concept. It has to happen. There has to be a rectification. Shimon ben Hillel, who was Shimai, who was Shimon Kepha, got, got put outside the camp of Israel and into Rome. He is presently in Rome and that currently... Because he's in Rome, the rock, all the works that is done through the lost house of Yosef is totally and utterly exiled. And Yehuda is exiled also in there. So all the good works that we're doing are basically creating this serpent, which is the Roman Catholic Vatican controlled church with three heads of the serpent. You know, Erev Rav head, Judaism, Edomite head, Christianity, and Ishmaelite head. And that's told about in the Zohar, the three-headed serpent, the three heads of the clipper, and one big belly <laughs> we've all been gulped down into. We need redeeming from there. You see, when we redeem Mashiach ben Yosef, we're all redeemed. It's all about redemption. We have to go through redemption. The final redemption is um, to remember. Okay? It, it's called Zakira, remembrance. We've got to remember Yosef. We've got to remember that light. We've got to remember that God is love. You know, we've got to remember a lot. We fall into a deep slumber in the belly of the serpent. We've got to wake up, hopefully in a gentle, nice way. We've got to wake up. We've got to, re we've got to redeem the one that was put outside the camp, bring it back into the camp of Israel. Okay? Like Yosef's bones. The children of Israel couldn't get out without the bones of Yosef. It's just the same Torah that we are now experiencing. We've got to get to that place. And it's upon us now. It's really, we are really right there now. Okay, so Pidion Nefesh, square ordinal 1527. For who is in the heavens equal to the Lord? Okay, got to ask that question. 201 is the ordinal of, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. 1527. For who in the heavens is equal to the Lord? Nobody. Okay, even though there's, it might appear that there are aspects to creation that are equal to the Lord, nothing is equal to the Lord. The um, big test about that is the whole concept of Mashiach ben Yosef. This is this is a phenomenal system with which Yod He Wau 
has been in a very concealed way getting in the lost house of Yosef in order to validate the Torah of Moshe and in order to validate the ketubah between Israel and Yotehuawe, Yotehuawe and Israel. It's a very, very powerful, massive system in order to conceal Yotehuawe because Yotehuawe is so utterly and absolutely great. It needs a big system. That system, however, is not equal to the law. It's just there to facilitate him doing what he has been doing in a very hidden way. It's a system that helps to maintain free choice because it's a system that balances evil and good. Okay? It's not equal to the law, though. Got to answer that question. Nothing is. But me, Bashahok Ya'arok, who is equal, is Mashiach ben Yosef. The initials of Mashiach ben Yosef. Okay? Is it equal to the Lord? No, it's not. There's only Yote while we nothing else beside. That whole system is there to serve the purpose of Yote while we fulfill in his Torah perfectly. Okay. He rode on a cherub and did fly. He swooped on the wings of the wind. So the square, the Miss Pagadolan, uh, sorry, the regular and the ordinal of that, 1527. Again, this is connected to the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef. In Judaism, that Mashiach ben Yosef is called Metatron. There's a lot of false teachings regarding Metatron within Judaism. There's a lot of false teachings regarding Mashiach ben Yosef within Christianity. Those false teachings in both camps are basically the same. If you were to study the concept of Metatron and to study the concept of the cosmic Christ of Paul, the one and the two the false doctrines, they're going to lead to a sense of duality and that is a big false god that we've got to get rid of it's a big false god of asav okay it's based on false knowledge and we've got to wrestle it down we've got to be able to conclude no it is only yote wawe and that is merely a system a facilitating yote while we're doing what he wills to do which is to rectify all of humanity to be able to receive a revelation of him and nothing else beside him. And what do we mean by that? That he is love and that he is the only power and that he's the only sovereign and only his will ultimately gets done. And we are part of that. Okay. And let's have a look. Okay, so with that, I'll say shalom. Please subscribe and share. I hope you've benefited from this. Shalom.